Welcome back, everyone, to our coverage of the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup in Los Angeles 2012. I'm Radical Russ Belville. It's Sunday, February 12th, 2012, and we are having a spectacular day, meeting all sorts of fantastic activists from all around California and all around the West Coast and, well, the nation for that matter. And joining us right now uh, to my right is Larry Love, L.S. Love. However you know him, he's an uh, activist here with MedicalMarijuana.com, or Medical Marijuana Radio. Dot com, so we have something in common. Hi, Larry. How you doing? I'm very good. Thank you, Russ. It's a pleasure to uh, finally meet you. I listen to your show all the time, and uh, it just... It's nice to be here with you today from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Santa Fe, all oh, right. 505 in the house, right? Absolutely. We are here, and uh, not only do I do my, my little show on uh, Saturday nights, but uh, I also uh, run the front end of one of the licensed producer dispensers in New Mexico. There's only 23 of them. Right. That's something people, you know, they always hear about medical marijuana states. There's 16 states, and they list them off. Blah, 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 blah. New Mexico is one of them. Uh, and I don't think a lot of people understand that outside California, it's a lot different. There's The systems are different. There's a lot more hoops to jump through. What was it like trying to get your permitting for the, one of these 23 dispensers? Well, uh, it was a long process. Uh, it, I'm not the owner. I just worked the front office, but mm -hmm. uh, it took about two years to get approved and uh, it was just painstakingly long. Yeah. You have to get patients on your board. You need three patients. You need a doctor. You need all kinds of uh, uh, requirements to be a non-profit because right. you must be a non-profit there. Mm. So, uh, New Mexico's program Last I looked, about 3,500 patients. Is there more than that now? Uh, it's about double now. It's, oh, okay. it's over 7,000. They get over 200 applications uh, per month. And uh, again, there's 23 producers growing and dispensing to these patients. That's all that they have right now. And of course, uh, New Mexico, uh, along with California, the only states that are currently uh, recognizing post-traumatic stress as a valid condition. Right, yes. Uh, I believe that... 50% of the uh, patients in the program are in for PTSD, yeah. uh, which is which is great. A lot of a lot of vets uh, really need it, and it's really helping them. You know, we've got medicalmarijuanaradio.com that you're working with here, and uh, folks, if you want any information, you can send an email to ll at medicalmarijuanaradio.com for the email address here. But uh, you know, you, you brought up, you listen to our show. You know, you've got your show coming out. There's, uh, I've seen the hemp TV guys running around here. I've seen uh, Cannabis Planet TV. Uh, marijuana media is just taking off, and it seems like it seems the time is right for a specific niche type of radio show to the medical marijuana side of things. Absolutely. Uh, the, the basis for my show, of course, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, John Doe out of Denver. I've been right. listening to him for a couple of years. And uh, my show is just based to give out information to, to patients. Mm -hmm. I'm all for legalization. Okay. Don't, you know, I, I just believe that if we make these medical programs work, then legalization is just right there. And I'm for legalization. As a matter of fact, um, I'm from Los Angeles. I lived here 30 years. Back in the, um, when, when did uh, normal start? Was it about 1970? 70. All right, so 1970, when I was 20 years old, I went down to Sunset Boulevard to a very tiny little storefront and picked up pamphlets and was handing them out as a 20 year old. I'm now 61 years old. I've been waiting 40 something years to be legal. And when I got my card uh, in the mail in 2009, I, I had this just warmth and, and chills and laughter sort of at the same time yeah. becoming legal. Now, of course, I started off being a recreational user for most of my life, but as you get older, you know, it, it's time to use it medicinally as well. Yeah, I often say that once you get your AARP card, that ought to be your medical marijuana card. Well, <laughs> yeah. th that is true, uh, although I'm shying away from even applying for that. Yeah. It's sort of admitting that. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Give again, <laughs> father time. Uh, yeah, that's that absolutely true, and, and uh, you know, fighting for as long as we've uh, as we fought for these these laws for some relief for some reform. I know personally my experience in that that feeling that you're talking about was the first time I was driving around with a substantial quantity of marijuana on me uh, and a couple of plants in the back of my Jeep and I you know pull up driving wherever and I'm in a turn lane and I look behind me and there's a Portland police car right behind me in the turn lane and that ice cold feeling you get in the pit of your stomach oh shit I don't want to get busted oh my god oh my god and then it went oh huh, wait a minute I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm that's not doing anything illegal. <laughs> well, well, you know what? I, I, that's the way I feel every day. You know, at work, at the dispensary that I work at, technically I'm committing a federal crime every day. Right. But when someone comes up to me and says, Larry, you've saved my life, you know, yeah. by, by this. Uh, I'm, I'm talking specifically about uh, a hash oil pen 
that a very sick person is using to dose himself. And it's always about dosing, okay, in the medical end of things. Yeah. Uh, so that gives me the impetus to, to go on and to, and to abide by my state's laws. I'm a big believer in states' rights, and I believe that I am helping people and uh, abiding by the state of New Mexico. Now, still, with these, uh, with these laws that we've gotten changed, there's still people that are getting persecuted, even with their medical cards. Uh, is that happening in New Mexico, some terrible stories there? You know, I don't know about really terrible stories, but, you know, all along the uh, New Mexico Department of Health that runs our uh, program, uh, they sort of erred on the side of law enforcement. They yeah. did not want a lot of producers in the state because they were afraid that uh, excess uh, medicine would be diverted to the black market. Right. So they always sort of held it back. But uh, we have some new people involved now uh, that are moving the program forward, even with the fact that uh, our governor is against medical marijuana and marijuana is that in general. Susanna Martinez? That's Susanna Martinez. She has stated that if a bill was to reach her desk to turn this whole thing off, that she would do it. Hmm. And so uh, myself and some other people, you know, we're, we're on top of it. We're going to make sure that uh, she doesn't get to do that. All right. Well, uh, Larry Love with MedicalMarijuanaRadio.com. Give people, you know, the info on how they can find the station, listen sure. to you. Uh, well, uh, we're doing it on one of your old uh, venues. It's the Stickham, but right. uh, we're looking to move somewhere else. But the, the shorter way to get there is MMJRadio.com. You don't have to type all those letters. We are live Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, uh, which is 8 uh, p.m. Uh, mid, uh, mid Mountain Time and uh, 10 o'clock on the East Coast. We're live at MMJRadio.com. Uh, give us a listen. And, yeah. uh, and keep listening to Russ. I've been listening to him for, for many years, and I, I thank you for all of your work. Well, thank you very much, too, Larry. I appreciate you stopping in. MedicalMarijuanaRadio.com or MMJRadio.com. Email at LL at MedicalMarijuanaRadio.com. Thanks for stopping in. Thank you. Good luck, everybody.